Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from GoKWH.com which I'm just going to refer to as GoKilowatt. So let's go ahead and open up this box and see what's inside. Okay, as soon as you open the box, right on top we have our M8 bolts right here. There's two of them. And then there is a very nice lining of styrofoam and it looks like the battery is right in the middle. Oh. All right, now that is, this is completely encased in styrofoam. All right. All right, when it's when it comes to the when it comes to the packaging, I would I would give this a grade A on packaging. That was that was packaged very well. All right, let's take a look at this battery. We've got some a uh, little bit of plastic wrap on the top. And the first thing I notice about this battery is that it has a battery capacity and voltage monitor right on top. So that is very interesting. Uh, it also has a couple of terminal covers. Uh, it says that the whole battery weighs about 26 pounds, which is right around 12 kilograms. And let's go ahead, let's go ahead and check out the measurements. Uh, let's see from the bottom, we're looking at uh, right, right under 13 inches, but from the top, if you want to measure the whole thing, it's about 13 and a quarter inches in width. Height is right at eight and a half inches and depth is right at seven and a half inches. All right, first impressions. I really like the color scheme. I like the yellow on black. It looks very nice. Um, it's uh, the, the front of it is very easy to read. It shows exactly what you have. Your 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, and there's a couple of things that you don't want to do like throw it in a fire, heat it up above 70 degrees Celsius, don't short circuit it and don't disassemble it. I am not going to be disassembling this because it does have an IP65 rating which makes it pretty much waterproof and I don't want to, uh, I don't want to mess that up. On the top, we have our uh, positive and negative terminals. And like I said before, there is this battery monitor right here with, it looks like a power button and a button that says set. Okay, and the one thing that I did realize that this battery did not come with is a user's manual. There is absolutely no manual that came with this battery. Um, so the set button, I really don't know what you would be setting. So I'm going to go ahead and scan this QR code and see if it takes me to uh, an online manual. It actually does just take you uh, straight to their website, their homepage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the, the power button and we're going to see what shows up. Okay, and I didn't notice it before, but it does look like in the screen there's a dent right there, which is weird. I can feel it, but I really can't see it. Well, let's go ahead and turn on this, this press this power button. And it shows 13.2 volts, and it shows that the battery is at 73%. And then after a few seconds, it shuts off. So let's go ahead and turn it back on, and let's hit the set button. And the set button, up. Oh. It says 1-P and then we have a flashing a flashing zeros. 2-L 3-F equals 4. All these 
zero 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 zero. Five dash B is on. Ten dash four is low. Seven dash A equals off. And then it looks like we're back here. Oh geez, okay. And now it says 100%. So I'm pretty sure I just uh, well, messed up the calibration of the voltage. So that, my friends, is why uh, you need to include a user's manual with the battery that you purchase. Um, none of those items really made any sense to me. And uh, it looks like I said it, so now it's wrong. So... Um, I'm going to have to try to find the manual online and probably reset it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test, test the voltage on these with my multimeter to make sure that, uh, that the 13.2 that it displays is accurate. All right, and our voltage is, yep, 13.17. And this does show 13.2, so we are right on the button. Okay, uh, like I said before, I went ahead and scanned the QR code, so let's go ahead and bring up my phone. And we are gonna try to find the user manual. So I'm guessing that we have to go to the 12 volt battery section. So let's hit this menu at the top and go to products. Go to 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. Let's find this battery, which is right here for $268. And then we're gonna scroll down and uh, we're gonna go to documents and we're gonna scroll down and here is the battery user manual. So we're gonna click on that and hit download and then we're gonna open file. And I will have a link to this, uh, this, this user's manual on my website along with this battery if you uh, want to look more into it. Okay, well here, here are all the specifications of the battery right here. You can see the nominal voltage is 12.8. We have a 100 amp hour battery, nominal capacity. Uh, that means that the recommended charging current is under 50 amps. Um, the, recommended the recommended discharge cutoff voltage is uh, over 10 volts. It's recommended that you uh, charge it up to 14.6 volts and the recommended discharge current is 100 amps. It also has the temperature ranges and then it has also scalability. So you could put four of these in parallel and four of those parallel sets in series to make a 400 amp hour, 48 volt battery bank. Here is a cable sizing chart, just in case you need one. That's always nice to see. Okay, but nowhere in this manual does it say anything about the set button. So, uh, that's kind of a bummer. And also this power button, I have to make sure that you know, it is by no means turning off and on the actual battery itself. I believe all it's doing is turning on the display. So don't think that you can turn this battery off by pressing this power button. Uh, it still is producing um, power through the terminals, even though uh, the display is turned off and I tried holding the power button down for like five seconds and that doesn't do anything. So this blue power button is only for display purposes. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, charge this battery up to hundred percent and then we're going to do a capacity test to make sure that we're getting what we paid for, which is hundred amp hours. So after I get all that done, I'll show you the results. All right, well, the capacity test of the Go Kilowatt battery is finished, so let's go ahead and look at the results. All right, and as you can see right here, our discharged capacity was 102.1 amp hours, which gave us 1313.54 uh, watt hours. And if you look at the discharge curve, uh, the blue line is the voltage of the battery, and it is a nice, very beautiful, flat, discharge curve all the way down to about oh about 12.5 and then it starts to really drop off and that is exactly the way it should be okay now that the capacity test is done and it it passed which is good uh we're going to go ahead and do a uh, max draw test and that means we're going to go ahead and just uh we're going to plug in a few items try to get it up to about 100 amps 
or uh, 1280 watts of electricity coming out of the battery. Uh, and we're gonna run that for, a, you know, for at least five minutes. We're gonna do that just to make sure that the battery can do uh, actually 100 amps of continuous discharge. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you what I have set up. Okay, here's our, our Go Kilowatt battery and I have a, uh, an amp meter right here. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and keep track of the amps coming out of the battery. Um, I have a 500 watt little heater right here. So that's gonna be 500 watts. And then I have my, uh, my Blue Eddy uh, AC200P with, uh, you know, it's only at 23%, uh, so it needs a charge. And it's probably gonna pull another 500 watts at least. So this should be, uh, with losses and everything, we should be looking at, you know, 1100 watts, 1200. I mean, we're probably gonna be pulling over 100 amps, which is the, the discharge max of this battery. So we're just gonna see if it can do all of this uh, for about five minutes. So let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and, well, this seems kind of weird. So let's go ahead and zero this out. There we go. Okay. And let's go ahead and uh, turn on the switch. There. Turn on the heater. All right, and it's ramping up. You can see that the wattage is right at 1,050 right here. So that's coming out of the inverter. And our amps are right at, uh, our amps are only at 86. That's 1,000, yeah, this is 500, and that's 460. So we need something else to plug in here. Let's find something else. Okay, I got another 200 watt heater right here. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, now that we uh, introduced this 200 watt heater, we got 700 watts of heat and charging the Blue Eddy at 450 watts. So our uh, watt meter right here says uh, we're charging at 1300 watts, well, 1280. So that's the watt hour capacity maximum of this battery. And it shows right from the battery, we are pulling 110 amps. And like I said, we're gonna go ahead and let this run for five minutes just to make sure that this battery is up to what it says it can do. And I went ahead and put a timer on there just so we're official. Okay, well, as you can see, it's been uh, well over five minutes because I actually set that timer probably a minute or two after I started this whole test. So it's been running for actually probably seven or eight minutes, um, but it's still running it just fine. Uh, you can see that we're still pulling about 110 amps. Uh, the little monitor on the battery says 86%. We still have 12.8 volts, 12.9 got two heaters running it does show still uh 1248 watts and uh and yeah and the blue eddy is still charging so what i did was i added a heat gun right here because i want to see i want to see if this battery is going to give up before this inverter does this is this is a 2000 watt inverter so i'm going to put this on low and we're going to see what happens so let's go ahead and do it it's on low our wattage is now 1722 watts coming out we have 160 amps coming out of the battery the time is uh, 645 up oh. and it looks like looks like something triggered was it oh my god was it this thing back here it was the circuit back here it turned off because it's too much it's too much for it i got everything back and running i had to plug in the the heat gun directly to the inverter uh it's still pulling 158 amps yeah so i mean that's like 1700 watts which this inverter can do This battery is starting to get a little warm. It says 12.7. These cables are getting a little warm. Let's go ahead and crank this up all the way. This is gonna blow something up. We got 218 amps. What's gonna pop? The inverter shows 2,067 watts.
Battery voltage is down to 12.5. I mean, you know what? I, uh, when's this thing supposed to shut off is what my question is. I mean, we're maxing out the inverter. You know, we still have the timer running, which is now at 10 minutes. And these cables are getting hot. So, you know what? I'm going to shut this off because I wasn't prepared to run this for very long. So, uh, let's go ahead and shut this all down. This battery can really push out the amperage. And it's, yeah, and it's still running all this stuff. So, let's shut it down. Okay, so what do I think of the 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Go Kilowatt? Well, this thing passed everything that I wanted. Uh, you know, it gave us a little bit over 100 uh, amp hours of capacity. I think it was 102. Um, we did a, a, max, a max draw test. And I mean, we, were, we put 2000 watts through this thing for multiple minutes and it still powered it. Honestly, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, it, the energy is there, the, the amperage is there if you need it, which is, which is nice. Um, earlier in this video, um, I did kind of rant that uh, the company didn't have very much on their, on their user manual. Uh, you know, it didn't say anything about the display, the settings of this, of this little uh, LCD uh, shunt display right here even though there is a setting button on there that you can change. Um, they did contact me and they did update their user manual, which will be on their website here pretty soon. And I will also include it on uh, my website as well. Uh, you can find that in the, in the description link below. In the description link below, you can also find a link to this battery. And if you use the discount code GYM12V, um, you can get it for a, uh, a pretty big discount. I think if you put that, uh, that discount code in on their website for this battery, you can get it for like $216. That is awesome. So I would check it out if I were you. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Go Kilowatt battery, uh, please leave them in the comments. Uh, thank you so much again and have a great day. Bye-bye.